this is for informational entertainment purposes only. Yeah. Don't be a idiot. Don't take the shit if it's illegal. Never ever cheat at sports. Always work if you end up being in a place where it's legal and you're not cheating at sports. Work with a very good coach Some of the and guys a doctor. Listed. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Unsounds Periodization and IFPB Pro Jared Feather. I'm going to say that every time. Every time. We are here to answer a very important question. Critical importance, societal importance, existential importance, move aside global warming. Are all pros taking boatloads of gear? This is a claim you will hear quite often in the forums and other places that if you want to turn pro, if you want to be pro, if you want to be a top pro, anything to do with pro bodybuilding, there is a sub-segment of subsegment is redundant, good God, segment of folks who will say to be a pro bodybuilder, you have to be on the kitchen sink. Yeah, my favorite is if I took as much as him, I'd look the same. Related idea. Yeah. So now here's the thing. Reality is complicated and nuanced and almost everyone who speaks about something has some kind of validity to their point. Even if we have to really reach, in, reach into the bag of tricks to find out where that validity is. So let's chat about it and have a relatively open conversation without naming names, of course. <laughs> uh, does it really take the kitchen sink to be pro, to compete pro, to turn pro, to win pro? And how much are the pros really taking? Of course, you're all literate, scientifically minded people. So you know that there's going to be, a, you know, normally distributed, uh, sort of topography of how much, you know, some pros take very little, most of them take an average amount, some take an extreme dose, could be a power law distribution, and it goes like this, I don't know. Jared, uh, you know, you've worked with tons of people, you've been in the industry for a while, you've had, you know, once you turn pro, real talk, really get into this weird like fraternity of like other pros just recognize that you're around, like you, yeah. they like don't see you until you get an FB pro card, they're oh, they start talking to you. So you've been privy to a ton of conversations. Oh yeah, of course. Um, Top trainers are pros. And yeah. People yeah. Listen. Yeah. You too. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, I'm kind of seen as like less than. Are we talking about middle school or <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> trauma? Uh -oh. uh, reliving past We're experiences, We're past lives. Um, all right. So, first question for you, Jared, and I'll try to add in some tidbits of my old bullshit that I sure. don't know about. Are directly are all pros on a ton, and we'll just define a ton combined orals plus injectables of three plus grams per week sure. on average for the year. So before that question, I'm going to go ahead and say when we... Sorry, yeah, real quick. Yeah. Uh, testosterone replacement therapy is usually between 100 and 200 milligrams per week. So we're talking about... Sometimes it's less. 30. Yeah, sometimes it's sometimes less. Sometimes it's less. A multiple of 30 of normal male testosterone or similar uh, anabolic hormone levels. Is that really the case? Yeah, so before we talk about that, we'll talk about, um, in the other video, we discussed how important genetics are. And but before you understand if these top guys are taking a lot or not, you have to understand that genetics also includes uh, your affinity for muscle growth to begin with, your uh, affinity to the drugs, how well the drugs uh, help you build muscle, how well you can handle them psychologically is one of the biggest uh that I've come across now since being in around a lot of pros, I know so many guys and we literally met a couple last year that have dropped out of shows because of the psychological burden of what they were taking, what their coach had them take. So that is literally part of the genetics uh, portion of, of bodybuilding. It's how well you handle the farm. Just to be clear, the psychological component is generally speaking, anabolic drugs or anabolic steroids specifically cause some psychological side effects. It's not a perceptive thing. It's not like all oh, the psychology of dealing with the fact that you're ruining your health. It's not that. It's that the drugs often increase aggression and specifically increase anxiety. In, in an interesting way, the anxiety is expressed as you just anywhere you are at any point in time, you just don't want to be there. You just want to be somewhere else. You just want life to kind of just get on with it. And it's just a discomfort at all yeah, times. And it seems that a lot of the more neurotoxic ones uh, have that uh, aggressive surprise issue yeah, yeah like trying and stuff like, like trend that. yeah um so you have to understand that first but the answer to the question is no because <laughs> it's not you can't just say everybody is on a lot of stuff um generally when you look at somebody and you see like really great shape um 
super great muscle bellies. They're really jacked. They can handle farm a little better. You see guys that are pros that don't actually like exactly have that shape. Generally, they're on a bit more. So like the guys who are just like uh, bowling balls who don't <laughs> don't necessarily have super amazing muscle bellies. Um, I have you know quite a few of them run a bit more because you want to be a pro, you want to be a damn pro. Like there's a lot of a lot of guys out of New York that I know that have taken quite a bit. So what you're saying is if you don't have the muscle belly genetics to step up with that a lot of the guys that don't have great shape genetics will be like well i have to compete somehow and so it's going to be through just raw size and, yeah. and leanness and so everything. they have a pr propensity to believe that to, so then they take more drugs sure because they'll hear what their counterparts are taking and then they'll be like oh so i have to take more than that because this guy's just going to beat me on shape because i don't have the gifts right so that's why it's like that it's not just random and psychological but um so the answer is no you know i know a lot of guys that are at the top i've talked to quite a few and um they'll be on less than some of the national competitor guys. Um, those guys that have been chasing the pro card for 10, 15 years and never got it. And they just think more is better. And I have to do more, more, more. And uh, in my experience, those guys take more than everyone. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, when you are going to be a top guy, you, you kind of know when you start, Sure. you know, whenever you cross over and you have been training for about a year on stuff, it's like that guy's going to be something. He's going to be somewhere. And those are the same guys that generally respond really well um, as far as growing muscle goes to the pharmacology. So actually the top, top guys are not necessarily always taking the most. Interesting. Yeah. Are there guys in the open IFUV ranks? that are taking less than a gram total per week on average? Um, I I could probably say this because he talks about it openly. That, on YouTube? Yeah. Then it's cool. And on Instagram and everything. So uh, there are guys who promote a lot of safer use models. I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, Joe Jeffrey from Physique Collective, John Jewett, who I'm going to talk about, and a few other guys, they promote these safer use models. You can't say safe use models because it's never going to be this. It's, it's not inherently safe. Right. <laughs> safer use models. It's like driving a car. Right. Like exactly. You're, die. you're never going to be right. fully safe. Right. Um, so they promote basically these milligram per kilogram dosages that are a lot less than what you would traditionally see in a lot of the open guys. John Dewitt is a 212 pro, so he's not necessarily open, but he's a IFB pro bodybuilder. He's taken fourth at the Olympia, I believe. Uh, sixth, and I think. Sixth. Sixth? Mm -hmm. He didn't get fourth at... Two, three years ago? I think it was six. Maybe it was six. John, I don't know. Maybe we're both wrong. Comment, let's know. Maybe something else. Um, he's a very high level 212 pro. He, um, into his show, I believe, talked about a podcast on YouTube with Joe of uh, Physique Collective, Joe Jeffrey, um, being under a gram, like 700 milligrams into the his last couple of competitions. Whoa. And that he's currently doing the same thing. He's not even above a gram right now. So I saw that on Instagram. Yeah. So... There are guys, and, and you know, that also has to do with timing. If you're massing, sometimes they're on lower dosages. If you're really close to a show, that's usually when, like, most of the stuff's in there. You include the orals. You include some of the – some people do AIs. You include all this other shit. Um, so that's usually when you see them on the most. And even then, John was saying, you know, he was under a gram. So it's, like, that's very impressive for being one of the best in the world. And in person, he looks absolutely absurd. Insane, yeah. And his legs are humongous. Yeah. Hamstrings are fucking three hamstrings. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Well, a lot of the open guys, I, I'm not going to – I would feel pretty confident saying none of the open guys are under a gram. Or at least all, very few. Right. They're all over fucking 240 on stage. You know, it's just – they're huge. They're huge people. And a certain milligram holds on to a certain, per, like, kilogram of muscle tissue. It's just how it works. So unless you were, like, a – a 6'4 offensive lineman and you already had quite a bit of fucking muscle to begin with yeah. and you decided to get lean. Like, I believe Dawson Carver was that way. Yeah. He was like a lineman before. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and uh, so what college was he at? I forget. I can't remember, but... Somewhere in Tennessee. Maybe. But yeah, that's what it looks like when a fucking a college football athlete uh, diets down to be a bodybuilder. They're just humongous sure. all around, so... But, short of that, it takes some grams. Yeah, it'll, t it'll take, you know, a bit. <laughs> cool. Next related topic... Classic guys, mm -hmm. men's physique guys, some different models there with use, yeah? Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, so if we're talking men's physique five years ago. I could rant on men's physique for a while. If we're talking men's physique five years ago when they uh, were actually men's physique and they weren't bigger than the classic guys like they are now. <laughs> um, they, I know guys that turn pro naturally, actually. I coached a guy that turned pro naturally. Wow. Um, and then didn't have to take stuff till later on because the well, you know prerequisites for all, for how good a men's physique guy is was you know beach body ready Steve Cook type of people like right. guys or just not that big yeah just not that big um, 
you know, Mark Anthony, the first ever IPB pro was substantially smaller than the guys now who are turning up uh, or first, sorry, first ever uh, Mr. Olympia and Miss Physique was substantially smaller than the guys now. Like they're bigger than classic physique guys because they don't have a weight cap. Dude, I've seen some of these guys backstage and I'm like, I, I know. I always think they're fuck. classic guys. I'm like, well, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, thank God physique. that guy's a men's physique. <laughs> yeah. It's wild, man. Um, and you know, a lot of those guys, it's the same way with all of them. Um, some of them are on quite little. Some of them are quite a bit. <laughs> it's yeah. just how it is. And then, okay, so last question here. Do pros typically just stay on all the time and blast and cruise? What fraction of them come off completely for how long? And is that similar for men's physique and classic? Physique? So thankfully, um, there's a you know a lot of intelligent people out there who are talking about these safer use models and they're just people who are pretty well uh, educated on the topic of pharmacology. So it's it's awesome that those guys are out there. There's always been this sort of, you know, blast and cruise mentality in there. Um, there's been like PCT, which is like HCG and some other shit that people get on just so they can be on more drugs and not come off drugs. Sure. <laughs> they're basically just putting in different types of drugs so they feel like they're doing something great for their health. And not, it's not necessarily better. Health um, phase. Right, health phase. Um, so a lot of these guys are on for the duration of a show prep. And, and I have seen a lot of these guys do show prep uh, multiple shows in a row at this point, even the open guys. Like yeah. last year, there were a few guys who made fucking huge runs and you don't come off during that time. Um, you can come off of specific compounds that might be more deleterious to the health, like trend, like it's more sure. neurotoxic. Or orals and stuff. Orals. And then you add them back in when you get closer to the next show, come off a little bit, but you're still pretty high in the pharmacology. So when it comes to that, a lot of those open guys, they're probably staying on longer. They're doing more than the men's physique guys, the classic guys. On average, it's just how it is. Again, a certain milligram of farm holds on to a certain kilogram of muscle tissue. It's just the way it works. So if you are men's physique and you're always on shit, probably cut that out. If you're classic physique, you're always on shit, cut that out. A lot of the open guys, they're just on forever. So they're doing blasting the cruise with BTRT, uh, which is generally from Joe. This is not our condition for me. Uh, go watch Joe's physique collective. He would say, you know, three to five milligrams per kilogram is a good uh, running dose for those guys for their cruise phases yeah so um but yeah most of the guys are on all the time they commit it takes a lot anything about uh insulin growth hormone etc uh any any say or sorry, insight you have from what the pros are actually using i would just say you're seeing it a lot more in the open guys um we're getting our advice currently from joe he doesn't like above six but we've heard people go astronomical so with this is shit. reference to growth hormone dosages uh, human natural production is somewhere between, oh, around two IUs per day. Mm -hmm. um, and then so the real business dose for getting shit done is anything above that. Six IUs per day transforms the fuck out of you. Yeah. Um, I will say I have heard of numerous pros in the 18 plus I IU too. range. I have to, quite a bit. And I mean, uh, and this is, again, this is on YouTube, so uh, – JP uh, has admitted Jordan P – is it Peterson or P Peters? Peters. Jordan yeah, Peterson. I know, yeah. They get them confused all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> JP has been on uh, 100 units of insulin. insulin. By the way, uh, if you if you shoot 10 units of insulin, you can eat 300 grams of carbs in one meal, and then two hours later, you're as hungry as if you've never eaten. Yeah, GI cleanse goes reference. up a lot. Yeah. So 100 um, a lot. And then like t over 20 – I use of growth. 20 I use of growth yeah. hormone. So well, that'll do something. Yeah. I mean, he attributes that to blowing out his waist. So, yeah, which may be not wrong. Right. Right. Okay. So a lot of these guys have taken quite a bit. Uh, again, even him, he's uh, coming over to the safer use models, which is cool. Yeah. That's great. So he gets, he gets promoted that as, uh, as well now, which is good. Very cool. So, so sort of to recap. Some classic physique guys, some men's physique guys are on quite little. Yeah, some. And maybe are on off most of the year or some of the year and then just kind of pre-contest for the last 16 weeks or whatever, just really get yeah. into it. And then open guys, open IFB pros probably on most of the year. Many of them never come off and just go to TRT. And then when they do go, a lot of the guys are in the one to three gram per week range. Yeah. And many, though not the majority, are probably in the three plus range. Yeah. 
What is the highest realistic dose that you've seen from people that aren't just like not something you see in a Reddit subthread? What do you mean realistic? Like you have good evidence to think that they actually took that much. We both know that story. Well, why don't you tell the story and keep the person out of it? Yeah, for sure. We know a man who was sending emails to his good friend and that friend showed us the emails and uh, was it 15? 15 grams 15 total? grams, 20 grams per total. week it's 23 23 grams total was what the email basically he was inquiring to his friend he was like hey is this a lot this is what my coach wants me to do what do you think and the friend saw it and was like what the fuck and it was 23 grams total i don't know where you put that so in a, a syringe is is like three milliliters okay um most of the dosages of farm i've only seen Sorry. 500 milligrams for, uh a test is one, so but that's the only thing I've ever seen that's... Task 500 is the only 500 milligram that I'm aware of. Yeah. And that's fif, That's a gram and a half 1. in one needle. And you need 23, you know? It's like, so that's like where do you put all yeah, that? Yeah, 15 needles a week. Where do you put oh, it all? Yeah. I have no of the, Just that. It baffles the mind. Yeah. So that is highly unusual. Very unusual. Uh, but there's probably more than a handful of people taking... That are only like eight plus. Three, yeah. is five, five to five ten. To, yeah. Yeah, there's quite a bit. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, if you guys like this kind of crap, let us know in the comments. Yeah. If you have any questions that maybe you are curious to have Jared back on to talk about more insightful stuff about pros and what they're really doing. You know, like um, we don't super enjoy talking about this kind of stuff because most of you are natural. We really just, you know, prefer to deal with that. And most of you are here for nutrition and training and not drug stuff. But Jared and I do have a a knack for having an annoyance at secrecy yeah. and at uh, opacity. Like there's this mystique of, oh, what are the guys really using? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I know a lot of pros have flat out lied about they were using in order to try to not influence young people to do as much. Right. Um, I believe Dorian Yates said he'd never taken over a gram right. before, which maybe nobody believes – uh, maybe it's true. It's just a 5%, maybe 1%, maybe half a percent chance that's true. Um, yeah. But I get where he's coming from because if you tell people like, look, yeah, I took three and a half grams, you know, some 16-year-old kid somewhere in England sure. or some shit is going to be like, let's do it. Yeah. Um, so just to recap, this is for informational entertainment purposes only. Yeah. Don't be a fucking idiot. Don't take the shit if it's illegal. Never, ever cheat at sports. Always work if you end up being in a place where it's legal and you're not cheating at sports. Work with a very good coach some of the and guys a doctor. Listed, some of the guys I listed, like always go for the guys who are preaching these safer use models. Yeah, Broderick Chavez. Broderick Chavez is a good one. Joe Jeffrey. John Jewett in his own right. Um, many others. Just kind of know stuff and will keep you safer than not. And uh, if you're interested about all this other stuff, we have a bunch of other videos. Um, about um, pharmacology and bodybuilding, about how much muscle you can expect to gain, about how it interacts with diet and training. Give those a look. Don't do dumb shit. See you next time.